hello there, Sean. My goodness, Sean, your weapons are bad, aren't they? Hey everyone, Sean and their trash weapons need our help. Comment down below some fun or useful fuse combinations for Sean. Though if you say Royal Guards Claymore with a Mulduga jaw, I will banish you to the gap between dimensions. I'm gonna show you some weapons that you'll want to keep forever. And you can, as long as you repair them. Later on, I will show you the optimal way to repair your weapons, and the uncomplicated way to get the pristine weapons you want. Let's go! Stall enemies. They're not hard to fight, but they're incredibly obnoxious. The textbook definition of a nuisance. But fear not. Behold! A stick! Dazzle Fruit instantly kill all stall enemies around you. Of course you can just throw or shoot a Dazzle Fruit. Wasteful! Or you can keep one of these babies on you. Erm, um, actually Cleric, forest dweller weapons are bad because the reused materials come with a cooldown. Shut it, nerd. Unequip your weapon, drop the forest dweller weapon, pick it back up. Just for that, go make a puff shroom one as well. Can you believe it? We're so close to hitting 200,000 subscribers for the third time! <laughs> we had and lost it twice because YouTube has been steadily unsubscribing you all from my channel. Can you do me a favor and check if that's you? Thanks. <laughs> now we need a tool for breaking ore deposits. What do you do, just look for a rock and fuse it to whatever's available? Stop it, James. Go finish your homework. Ore deposits can be broken in one hit, simply with lots of attack power, even if the weapon isn't blunt. It takes 25 or more attack power for a two-handed weapon, 40 or more attack for a one-handed weapon, and 53 or more for a spear. Spears are faster, but they are stabby, so they're not great for getting multiple ore veins in one swing. Let's go with a one-handed weapon. We want high durability and something we can repair, so royal broadsword it is. Put a silver Lizalfos tail on it, and bam! A long-ranged weapon that's good for mining too. Get that trash out of here! Shields are the best mining tools! A shield with shield bash and shatter weapon level 1 or more can instantly break anything you could ever need. Except those blue rocks, but that's Inobo's job. With a hitbox on them, they'll also let you perform bomb drop parries. Parry and press up on the d-pad at the same time. Then drop a bomb for an instant explosion in front of you that keeps you untouched. It's good for combat and it looks cool. Here's the shield variations I like the most. Hylian Shield for its comfy 800 durability, Shard of Light Dragon Spike because it both smashes things and heals you when you do. Dragon Spikes are terrible for shield surfing though. Lionel Mace Horn because it looks less ugly than most things. Silver Lionel Saber Horn, it's additionally good for spanking enemies just not for stone ones. Or a minecart fused to a savage Lionel shield. Great for mining and shield surfing. Just bad with durability. Get these trash variations out of here! I found the new best variation. Shard of Dinral spike on the Hylian shield. It's the Swiss army knife of shields. It mines, it breaks boxes, breaks enemy armor, destroys stone enemies. It's a good fire starter. Boom! Instant explosions! Do you miss Rivali's Gale? Use the drop parry inputs. Drop a spicy pepper or sunshroom for an instant updraft. Drop wood for an instant campfire. If you're standing in grass, drop a pinecone for an instant inferno. Or, if you're carrying a wooden one-handed weapon, use a pinecone to look cool as fuck.
You can also use an Igneo Talus Heart. It actually does more damage. I believe it is important for you to have your very own F*** OFF stick. This uses the POW hammer subtype. Put a mushroom, a spring, or a seal plushie on a one-handed weapon. Then use instant spin attacks for maximum efficiency. Octo balloons also give weapons POW hammer, but they only last for one hit. Also, seal plushies give the most attack power, and for some reason, particularly the blue seal plushie, but springs don't burn. So that might be the most practical choice, just not the funniest. Or we can make the icy fuck off stick. Fuse a non-blunt ice material to a feathered weapon. It won't send them as far away, but it keeps them fuck off for longer. It's additionally good if you hate swimming. Hey Cleric, why is there a distracting sliding banner of usernames at the top? <laughs> I'll never tell. I always thought the slower stamina loss from spinning with the soldier's claymore was useless. But this changed my mind. Introducing the Lawn Mower. Mow the grass on your lawn in seconds. Pesky bushes, no problem. Trees, gone. Ore deposits, obliterated. The forces of evil, smote. And you know how usually when you fuse a weapon to another weapon, the secondary one will suddenly break off without warning? Because the big Goron sword has at least 25 more durability than the soldier's claymore, it'll stay on for the duration of the entire weapon. Therefore, it's just as reliable as any other good weapon you'd want to keep. Initially, I had used the Royal Halberd, thinking that spears had greater range than two-handed weapons when fused onto things. But I later learned that they do not. They give the same amount of extra range. Obvious to everyone, you need a shield surfing shield. What is less obvious is your options. Using the Hylian shield as a base would be ideal, but you may be using it for something else and can't dupe it, or don't want to. So of course, just use the shield with the second highest durability- WRONG! We, of course, must prioritize that it can be repaired. Get these out of here! But Cleric, you can repair those if you unfuse whatever's attached to them, fuse them to something that can be repaired by Rock Octoroks, feed them to them, then bring them over to Pelison and detach it, then refuse it to whatever it was attached to- NO! That is incredibly not worth it! The next best shield for shield surfing that can be repaired is the Radiant Shield. It has the least amount of friction of all shields, but unfortunately Fuse makes that irrelevant. However, the important part is, is that it has one of the lowest shield surfing damage ratios, meaning it loses durability slower than other shields when surfing on it. Doing math or whatever, it essentially has 71.4 durability when you only shield surf on it. With that in mind, now you just gotta choose your flavor of shield surfing slipperiness up. That's what it is called in the game files. There's also three special minecarts that the game tries to stop us from fusing to our shield. The one from Minecart Land, it has special red paint on it and the Rock Pillow minecarts, owned by Dugby and Mota. These two disappear after their quests. We need to have them! Do you ever get collector's anxiety? But I don't know how yet, so moving on. Sneak Strike Sword. Ah. 
Did you get your Forest Dweller Puff Shroom weapon? Well, now you need this to complement it. This is the I don't want to deal with this right now combo. Ooh, ooh. Sneak strikes with eightfold blades do 16 times damage. It'll need 75 or more attack to one-shot all enemies that can be hit with sneak strikes. Ignoring modifiers and clothing slash food buffs, 70 is the highest we can get using the Silver Lionel Saber Horn. And that still one-shots everything except Captain Construct 4s, which are a pretty rare encounter, and Silver Boss Bokoblins. So this is satisfying enough as it is, and even that can be remedied just by wearing a single piece of clothing with a tack up on it. But I'm not happy. This is two weapon slots taken up to serve one utility. I'll tell you what. All you bone enjoyers, you Molduga jaw enthusiasts, all you luchador and evil spirit from beyond looking asses, this one is for you. Put a Molduga jaw on it. Your boner proficiency will push it to 84 attack, letting you one-shot all enemies that can be hit with sneak strikes, and it is good for mining, breaking armor, and smashing stone enemies. Now it's a solid tool to have. Bee stick! Now, you may think this one sucks, and that everyone already knows about it. And you're right. But there is more to these bees than you may know. If you spawn in some bees and then quickly run and look away, the bees will never despawn. They exist for as long as you do not perceive them. They uh, won't attack any enemies or anything either. But construct heads will try to target them, and people are exploiting this fact to create pulse lasers. Basically, if you can quickly turn a beam emitter on and off quickly enough, it'll do damage more frequently than if you had just left it on. Bees can help with this. If you want to know precisely why and how, check out Evan the Bouncy's video in the description. If you want to just try it, here's a simple build. You can find cages at the enemy camp south of Poplar Foothills Tower. Auto-build it, get beneath it before it drops, hide in the corner, and attack to summon the bees and turn it on. The bees usually can't get you in the corner, but you can hold your shield up anyway. Since we are close to the bees, they will disperse after 10 seconds. So just parry with your new best shield to hit and turn the device off, wait a second, then hit it with the bee stick to turn it back on while summoning more bees! If you want to experiment with this, you can trap bees inside balloons to prevent them from chasing you outside safe zones. Do with this information what you must. Also, here's a crap ton of research on construct heads and pulse lasers for you to read. I sure didn't. Link to that also in the description. Whoa, hey, why not like, like the video? <laughs> Get it? Because- A boomerang. You should have one, because they're fun. We got the ice runner, a giant boomerang with an ice key swing. Fun. We got the forest fire, a boomerang with a fire emitter. It sucks, but it's fun. We got the boomerang two, giant boomerang with a Colgara jaw on it. It's a good wide range boomerang, which can hit enemies multiple times in one throw if spaced correctly. Throwing a boomerang does 1.5 times damage, so this is actually quite powerful. 
can you beat my day one record of hitting an enemy five times with one throw? Yeah. Eightfold long blades are also fun. This wind beam thing wasn't fun in Breath of the Wild because the wind cleaver's sheath was ugly. And the beam did a low amount of set damage. But now the wind beam can be hot, icy, shock, muddle buddy. And it shares the attack power of the weapon. It's possibly one of the best ways to deal damage to multiple enemies using only one durability. I'm recording this section while sleep deprived. A reusable hoverstone weapon. I never used hoverstones often, but with this I think I might. Update, I do use it a lot now. It's, I actually really like this one. Throw it low and create an easy ledge to jump off of for bullet time. Throw it high and have some nice high ground that you can ascend to. Use it as shelter for a campfire. Or use it for Addison signs. And when you're done, drop it down and refuse it. No durability lost. It's just plain old useful and doesn't cost any resources. I like that. Just don't use it in shrines. Or get it too close to Gleox and Lynels. If you're still collecting Korok seeds, it could be neat to have a rock puzzle solver. Honestly, I might prefer to just solve them normally. I ran out of shrines to do, and I'll take whatever puzzles I can get. It's not hard though, the missing rock is always out in the direction of the empty space. But if you insist on cheesing it, you can use almost any medium-sized rock. Flat ones, round ones, brown ones, tan ones. It's most efficient to put it on a two-handed weapon and just stand in the right spot. But shields need to carry more of all of this utility. I say put it on a shield. Then you just drop the shield in the right spot. Or unsheathe a one-handed weapon and then crouch down in the right spot. It's about time I recommend weapons strictly for, like, fighting and stuff. I'll give you a sword, a spear, and a claymore. For the sword, you should get a royal broadsword with a frost gliok horn on it. Normally, when flurry rushing with an ice weapon, the ice only lasts for half of the swings before running out of juice. But because the gliok horns have unlimited elemental use, it'll last for every hit. Flurry rushing with royal weapons does two times damage, and breaking enemies out of ice does three times damage. Flurry rushing an enemy that can be frozen with the sword does 1,404 damage, without any modifiers or attack up buffs. That's instant death for all enemies that can be frozen. And for those that can't, it's still a solid weapon. For the spear, I recommend the Zora spear with a silver Lionel mace horn. And you might ask, why the mace horn? The saber is stronger. And I'll let you choose. You can have the bonus of breaking enemy armor, destroying stone enemies, and higher damage on froxes and stone taluses. Or you can have four extra damage. It's up to you, it's just personal preference. 
Since we're here with a Zora weapon, you might want to know the optimal way to get wet. Cleric, how do I get wet fast? I'm glad you asked. The fastest way I know is to attack, then instantly press D-pad up and drop a splash fruit or a choo-choo jelly. When you're in range of enemies, however, that becomes precise with spears, since hitting an enemy puts a cooldown on dropping things. So instead, hold Y, immediately press D-pad up, let go of Y, and then drop your choo-choo jelly or splash fruit. Side note, I didn't know that hitting these items damaged your weapons. They didn't in Breath of the Wild, but they sure do now. Sidon can also make you wet, and he can make you wet for longer. But have fun chasing him for that. And yes, I know you can whistle to have him come to you, but his legs are stubby and it's still inconvenient. Hey guys, it's me, Lightclick. I can't help but notice you haven't liked the video yet. <laughs> Do you have any pets you wouldn't miss? Also, each piece of the froggy set secretly increases the duration of your wetness. Good to know. Bonus tip! Is this you in the quick menu? Sometimes you'd like to use a specific material more often but you haven't used it enough for it to be early in the list when sorted by most used. Here's what you do. Pull out your bow, D-pad up, sort by most used, then find and select the material, then spam D-pad up until it is placed near the beginning of most used. Hi, I'm Bonus Tip. And I approve this message. And I guess, as a final weapon suggestion, for the Claymore, you can have one Lionel Backbreaker. A Royal Guards Claymore with one durability left, with some powerful thing fused to it. If you didn't know because you didn't watch one of the 700 videos about this, Attacking while on a Lionel's back consumes no durability, so the critical damage from the last hit can be used over and over as long as that's all you use it for. Fuse your Silver Lionel Saber Horn to the Royal Guard's Claymore, then start smashing it into the ground until you get the badly damaged message. Then, only smack it into the ground two more times, then it should be at one durability. You get two times damage from the Royal Guard's effect of low durability, another two times damage from the critical weapon break hit, another 1.5 times damage if you eat a three attack up food, and since this isn't a weapon we aim to repair, we might as well get that plus 10 attack modifier to keep. And if you're feeling ugly, put a Mulduga Jaw on it, and wear either the Radiant or Evil Spirit armor set for another 1.8 times damage. With all of that, you can kill a Silver Lionel simply by getting on their back once. Just try to avoid spamming Y after the killing blow, or else you might jump attack the ground and break it. The best versions of these weapons use pristine weapons. And instead of me covering all possibilities of how to get what you could want, let me just give you the tools to figure that out yourself. First. Go break a decayed version of whatever pristine weapon you want if you never have before. If you're unsure, go find and break one anyway. Check the description for the Tears of the Kingdom object map. 
switch the view to the depths, search minus field ghost, then whatever pristine weapon you want in quotation marks. Let's say an eightfold blade. Then, you'll see all the one-handed weapon ghost boys that can possibly give you a pristine eightfold blade. Go to each one of these on the map until you find one. You should make it a habit to pick up and drop the weapons you don't want. This way they can re-roll from their loot table what they'll give you next time there's a blood moon. Otherwise they'll just always have that thing that you don't want. Unless you have a save you can load before that weapon ever loaded in their hands. And now that you have the best weapons ever, let me show you the optimal way to repair them. Turn off your sages. Seabage attack shrine. Beep bop boop beep boop. There's another Octorok over there, but they're kind of out of the way. Drop your thing a medium distance from them. Not too close, not too far. After they suck it up, let them chew it just once, and then hit them. Don't wait for them to spit it back out. Don't wait for the clean effect. That's not optimal. Pick up your equipment and move on to the next one. The bow is a fine way to hit them, but it consumes an arrow and durability, and you need to make sure not to aim at them until they're busy sucking, or else they'll hide, and that's a time loss. Or you can just whack them with your Igneo Talus Shield. Costs one durability, but that's almost nothing out of 800. But if you have it, just use the Earthquake technique. You can hold it down and release to hit when they've chewed once, or cancel it with B if you need to. And it costs you nothing. Two minutes and 43 seconds. New personal best. Oops, all out of Octorox? Teleport to Siku Tamak Light Route by the Akala House of Bones. Ascend here and break these rocks to get inside. Shoot the next set of rocks with five or more explosive gems while in bullet time. Boom! Panic Blood Moon. All the Octa Rocks are back. This is best done with a five-shot bow. It'll save you gems and it doesn't even require you to use bullet time for these rocks, since all five gems are shot at once. If you broke most or all of these rocks, you'll have to go find some others, and they'll likely require more gems to be shot at them to cause a panic blood moon. These rocks right here required 15 gems, three shots from a five-shot bow and bullet time. Search Auto G Asterisk in the Tears of the Kingdom object map to see all instances of these breakable rocks. And if you find some that cause panic blood moons just as or more easily, let us know in the comments. And with that, I have imparted my knowledge upon you, Sean. Now go forth. Go forth with the strongest weapons. <laughs>